Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I giggle my video. <laughs> so he's giggling too, he gets it. So anyways, you guys, what is up? I'm here with my dad. This is my father. Hello. <laughs> Oh my god, this is literally like so crazy. My dad, not only does he never get in photos with me, imagining you being in video with me is like, like my earth is shattered. My earth is flat right now. Shout out to you, Shane Dawson. <laughs> the reason we both wanted to do this, actually we were both really prompted both to make this video because we wanted to talk about our past and our past struggles growing up with each other, I guess, or just kind of like seeing eye to eye as we we're growing older and as we got older and things like that. And it's Pride Month and we we're both so motivated. And my dad, it's really, really cool. My dad's super motivated to talk about his past with me and and how he is now with me. So it's really, 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 really cool and exciting. And I'm gonna stop talking so much. I'm gonna let my dad take the floor a little bit later. So I just wanna say thank you to you for being so open and wanting to be on my channel. And I love you so much. You know that you obviously, but I'm really excited. I'm really nervous because this is really, really candid. <laughs> and this is how like me and my dad grew up together and how hard it was for me, you know, growing up, not having my parents understand me as much as I wanted them to and not really being able to convey that. I kind of wanted to go in and talk about our story and seeing the major transformation that it is now. It's just so crazy. My dad works with me now. He works with Lunar Beauty and yes. Lunar Beauty is a family business and it's so, so cool. But yeah, that's what today's video is going to be. And let's going to get right into it <laughs> my dad he is so tan next to me it's not even, this is i'm my mom's side like face complexion wise i can't even get dark so my name is manny gutierrez i'm actually junior <laughs> but it's easier for everybody to call me senior mm -hmm. just because he's the junior mm -hmm. um, i'm the third technically actually the third technically yeah <laughs> but the reason why i wanted to do this is because first of all it's it's Pride Month, and that's has a big part of my life now. And it's just certain things that have come up recently that have just kind of been tugging at me. And I don't know, it's just, this is not me. Me getting in front of the camera is definitely not me. I might even shy away from still photos. Photos. <laughs> <laughs> but this is something that I feel passionate about and that I wanted to share my story because there was a time in my life where I, I wasn't supportive. Like, that's not how it is now. Like, that's what's gonna help you get through it. Like, that's so long ago. We are so strong now. I, I grew up in a Latino household. My mom and dad raised me and they, they did the best that they could. I, I love them to death. There wasn't really much topic of, of talk and discussions about uh, about the LGBT community. We did have gay family members in our in our family, but to be honest, I was never I wasn't raised in a in a hateful home, but for some reason I grew up resenting the LGBT community. And to be honest, I don't I don't know why. Me and my wife uh, of twenty eight years this year 28 um, yeah, years. That's Fuck. Un unbelievable. That's so amazing. She's my soulmate. I love her to death. We've actually known each other since elementary school. We we went to elementary school together, middle school, and high school. We ended up dating when she was a junior. I was a sophomore, so she's a cradle robber there. <laughs> um, cradle robber for real. We started uh, our family at a very, very young age, right out of high school. Mm-hmm. I believe I was 17 when I had you, so... And mom was 18? 18, 18, like about to be 19? Yeah, like somewhere... Up, at the cusp of 19. Yeah, somewhere around there. We started very, very young. So, <laughs> with me, of course. Yeah. So <laughs> with, with, uh, we have three boys. <laughs> yeah. uh, Manny is, uh, is number one. He was the biggest challenge for me. He was always a sweet, loving kid. Had the, the, the biggest heart. We both knew there was something different about him. He played with uh, with <laughs> with dolls. Um, <laughs> did I really? Yeah, you did. I was a huge baseball fanatic. I tried to get him to play baseball, but it was it, it was something that tug of war. Yeah, it was. It was time. tug of war with us. He did it. I believe just out of love for me, and I appreciate that. Especially nowadays, I look back and I really do appreciate that. So I'm, I swear I'm gonna get through this. Yeah, you're gonna get. You're doing great, Dad. So um, we knew he was he was different. Like I said in in the beginning, I wasn't always supportive of the LGBT community. And me being this the idiot that I was back in the day, I I tried to change him into. I guess you would call a an or normal boy. We even went as far as taking him to counseling. I was in the mentality back then that. This was a choice. I know 100% now that that that's false. Uh, he was born this way. <sighs> <laughs> so 
to wear. Man. I wasn't very educated uh, back then. Throughout your life, throughout your upbringing, when you got older, things just became harder for me. We started like separating. Obviously, started hanging out with your friends more often, not being in, at the house as, as much, but understandably so, because you probably, you felt disconnected, I think. And I want to be as brutally honest as I possibly can. Not only did it affect my relationship with you, but it affected my relationship with my wife as well. Obviously, she's the mother. She's <laughs> the mama bear. She's <laughs> caring. She was just being protective of you. Every time we would have a, an argument ab about it, it was all my fault. 100%. She was just doing what a caring mom would do. Damn, dude. <laughs> Serious. It's, isn't it like therapeutic, though? So we'll see at the end. Yeah, of the I video. promise you. <laughs> we didn't have no bond together. At, yeah, at there was all. no. We had no connection. There was no connection whatsoever. Yeah, me and my dad didn't have a normal, or I guess quote unquote normal like father son relationship. Like we wouldn't go outside and like play catch, and we wouldn't like do these normal bonding or what society thinks as normal bonding male experiences. And it was because that, of the disconnection that we both had. You know, my dad, I always felt was trying to like change me, and I always felt like I was trying to change him to see how I was thinking. So it's like. We had this constant tug of war back and forth. So instead of us talking about it and spending time with each other, we like just disconnected from one another. My parents would argue about it and they would talk about it amongst themselves, but I would always be excluded from that because I would always just excuse myself. And I feel like that's why we had like more of an estranged relationship. I do remember this one argument that I had with your mom that really, really affected me because during that argument, she just straight out told me, she says, if you don't change the way you see your son, you're going to lose him forever. And that's probably the... That was a, I feel like that was a turning point. Yeah, definitely. I began like reading just stuff on the internet about the LGBT community, fathers raising gay sons. I just basically educated myself. And this is a, what, I, what age were we here? I would say you were probably, what, 15, 14, 15, this, 16 years so before old. I would like go to, before I went to counseling before I technically came out. Yeah, so yeah. this is before then. Yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely. And I don't know when you started doing makeup. To be honest, that was I, until I was like twenty one. Okay, so that's another. That's a whole another kind of worms. Exactly. I made the decision with my wife as well for us to go to to counseling. For anybody that's out there listening to this or, or viewing this that is in a similar situation, I can tell you that as a father to father, if you're if you're watching me, you need professional assistance. You need professional help for you to get through the, the roadblocks that you, you mentally have. I mean, going to counseling, being able to talk to somebody one-on-one -on -one really made a huge, huge impact in my life. I was able to open up about what was bothering me and and, and in turn, they gave me counseling on, on both on both sides, what Manny was probably feeling and what I was going through as well. It was definitely needed, and I, I would highly, highly recommend any parents out there that are struggling with this uh, is to go get some counseling. And this process that I took on or, or that started within me, it was years and years and years counseling and just trying to change the way I, I viewed a, a certain individual. For individuals, it's something that doesn't happen overnight. I promise you, if you give it your 100%, you will see the changes. Okay, so kind of changing the subject a little bit. So I kind of wanted to talk about me coming out and how it was for me. Basically, what happened was my parents caught me chatting on MySpace with a dude. And it was a very, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, they <laughs> sat me down. We all bawled for, like, days, literally. And so basically what happened is I ended up being the kid that I am, the people pleaser that I am. I uh, decided to go to counseling for about six months because my parents suggested it. And just to kind of, like, talk about it, my parents didn't really know what was going on. I didn't really know what was going on. I was very, very confused. And then I went into a depression a couple months into it. And I just started getting more and more standoffish. I feel yeah. like I started becoming more reserved. I started hanging out with my friends more. I spent less time at home. I spent more time in my room. And it was because, you know, I felt like I wasn't I wasn't doing anything right. I felt like, you know, I was letting my family down. I felt like I was letting my parents down. I felt like I was letting myself down and I wasn't able to change. But my parents, being the awesome parents that they are, approached me and were like, what is going on? They noticed my disconnect. I feel like you guys like were like, oh my God. So they noticed my disconnect and I told them the truth and that I thought that the counseling was what was making me a little bit more depressed and 
that was sending me into the spiral. And so they told me that I didn't have to keep going. And I feel like that was a, a big moment in our life and a big moment for us as like me, my mom and my dad, when they said that they just want me to be happy, you know, they, they wanted like the, my, the old son back is basically what they kind of explained it to me as they wanted the old me, the happy me, the one that was exuberant and happy all the time. I stopped going and then we went into like a big phase of don't ask, don't tell in my house. <laughs> we literally <laughs> never talked about anything after that for years and years and years. And it didn't really get brought up until they discovered my Instagram. And that is when like shit hit the fan. That is when things got a lot more complicated. You know, on my Instagram, I had started in drag or I had started like my makeup career in drag. And that became such a confusing time for both my mom and my dad. And they were very like, are you trying to become a woman? Are you transitioning? Like what, like they just didn't understand what I was doing and why I thought it was fun and creative and just expressing a different form of um, creativity for myself. I still remember the day when you guys approached me on my Instagram and I went into a full panic attack, full on like breathing into a paper bag in my yeah. room. Not only were we not, bad terms but we weren't on like the best of terms we were still very disconnected and we were still very just like not close in any way but then throwing this on top of it you know them seeing me in drag and them just being like what the fuck like what is going on like they just did not know what was going on in my life and i didn't want to tell them either i didn't want to express it to them because i didn't i didn't want to tell them about me wanting to play with makeup or working at sephora or anything like that because i didn't think that they would understand and you know they didn't and they wanted me to delete my instagram Hell no. so they did not get it <laughs> and it was for so it was for me really for good reason like lying to them like i told my dad i worked at gc penny i did work at gc penny technically it was a sephora inside gc penny and i would uh, jump out my window when I would go to work so that they wouldn't see me with makeup on and then I would take off, I would have makeup wipes in my car and I would take off my makeup before I went into the house. So they would never know that I was wearing makeup. And it was just such a weird, crazy time that like even thinking about that, it seems like a different life for me. But when they had discovered my Instagram when I started really getting into makeup is when I thought things are really hard. Again, we we knew you were, you were gay, but the whole makeup aspect of it just took it to another level where I wasn't ready for. Again, your mom being the, the more caring, more <laughs> understanding. Sweet creature she is. Yeah, the more understanding person in the relationship. She <laughs> talked to you and tried to help you through your, I guess, anxiety issues that you were having. Me, I was more standoffish. To be honest, I, I'm embarrassed of that. I feel horrible for, for the, not the things I did, but the way I, I behaved, the way I acted towards my son during his, his difficult time. Uh, difficult years in, in his childhood, in his growing up as a young man, having to go through this alone, I, I could just imagine. This is why I'm doing it, to be honest. I want to help other kids that are going through the same things that, that Manny went through. I also want to help parents understand that you can make a change. I'm living proof here that you can make a change. It's going to take a lot of work and take a lot of time. You can do it. It's the same kid that you you were holding in your in your arms when he was a little baby. I, I have pictures, and I didn't tell Manny I was going to bring these, but he probably doesn't want me to show them. But I don't you give, have photo photos? I don't give a shit. Oh, gonna, my God. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyways. Dad, what the... So oh. so this is this is Mandy when he was a, a little a little tyke a little boy and uh, these are my two favorite oh. my favorite pictures Look at of my headshot <laughs> But oh my goodness that's a sweet smile Yeah this kid right here <laughs> is the same one in this picture right here the same man the same boy that I I grew up loving. That was one of the ways that I kind of helped myself get through the difficult difficult times. And you probably didn't know this, but I would go look at pictures like this, and I would literally be in the garage talking to myself, saying, "The kid that you're you're upset right now at is the same damn kid in that picture." The quicker you realize that, the easier and the the faster you're gonna get to the point where you can be that supportive parent. And if you're not, then go get some help like I, like I did. They need you for the rest of their lives. And likewise, I need him uh, in my life for the rest of my life as well. There are organizations out there that, that can help you. There are support groups uh, that you can contact, but don't ever, ever abandon your kid. Keep loving them because they, they are your child. You might not always agree with them because uh, He's a hard ass, he's a hard head, <laughs> stubborn kid, but I will always support him in whatever he does. When you went through that whole drag phase and in the makeup, again, I wasn't, I wasn't excited about it. But again, I was already in that transition point where I knew if I wasn't a loving, supporting dad, I probably would have, would have lost you forever. So it took me a little while after, because it was like, okay, we found out that you were gay and then later on we we found that you were wearing makeup for me that was like a big shocker to me and i can't really tell you exactly when 
I was okay with it because I really, I really don't know. Yeah, um, I really don't either. Honestly. I can't, I can't pinpoint a, a day or a, a year where I was like, I'm cool with it, but I am obviously. I feel like it was just time. Yeah, it really was, helped. You know, like oh, yeah, just time. Definitely. In general, you know, the more I grew on social media, the more I got to show my family that I was able to take care of myself, and you know, I would show them my stories that people sending me emails and DMs and people saying how my story or who I was was helping them in a way, you know, or helping other young men who want to wear makeup or who just basically just want to express themselves or other young women who want to express themselves. I would show them like, oh my God, look at this like message I just got from this yeah. person that loves me and doesn't really even know who I am. I feel like you and mom were both able to see that I was okay and that I wasn't, you know, just doing this off a of fluke and that I wasn't, I wasn't going to be a failure. Yeah, but to be honest, I don't think it was ever, it had anything to do with like a career choice or mm -hmm. us just knowing that you were going to be okay. I think you, you kind of touched on it a little bit is that we saw that you were happy i think that was the biggest thing for us is that you you came out of that funk that you were in and you started becoming your old self again and that's where i think that turning point was for all of us was that we started to see the manny that we all knew and loved going back on what you said in regards to people contacting you and sharing their stories with you and how you've affected their lives i'm thankful for that i'm actually thankful for all your followers i guess you made it possible for him uh, to get through those tough times. I wasn't there. I should have been, but... Uh, yeah, but I wasn't. I love all your followers. Everybody that's been there to support you, I give you a big thanks. You were there at a time when he needed you the most. You were there at a time where I should have been there, but I wasn't. You've helped him realize his dream, especially with all the, the growth that he's had in the last, what, two, three, four years mm -hmm. from when you started working at Sephora and, <laughs> yeah. and Mac. Fast forwarding to, to today, just this last Saturday, you had your, your first launch for this with, with this palette right here. <laughs> this fucker right here. Yeah. And to be honest, I'd like to share my take on this because I know he's given you the reasoning behind that and, and it's it's a beautiful story. This means so much more to me than you know. When I see this, I see him literally fighting and struggling and working so hard to achieve his goals, even though he didn't have the support of his his father or, or his family at, at times. He did start off in drag and I know there's people out there that don't believe him. I don't really <laughs> give a shit what you say. I, I know the truth and there's other shit out there that I know the truth, but I'm not going to same thing now. I will say, say I will say it later. I, I swear to you, I will. <laughs> when he came up with that idea, I was probably the proudest I've ever been of him when it did come out. When it when we first completed, when we received it for the first time, we actually held it in our hands. I was a proud papa. I, I know the struggles behind this. I'm a part of Lunar Beauty. I'm going to make sure that as a company that we we do give back to the community. I'm going to make it a mission of my life that I will be there for the LGBTQ youth that needs help and guidance. I thank you all. There's really not much I can say. I'm going to ask I'm going to ask my son to help me create I guess my social media platform so I could bring awareness to the cause. Great organizations out there that are 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 there to help and I want to make sure that I give everything that I possibly can to help them out. They just need to have somebody tell them that they're loved. Maybe I'll even do videos <laughs> uh, like this in the near future. They probably won't be this fancy <laughs> or edited. I'll probably just be behind my damn computer, but mm -hmm. I want to share my views, maybe do Q and A's with parents that are struggling out there. <sighs> well, I will help you, of course, create an Instagram and a Twitter and do all that you would <laughs> like. Of course, you know, I just wanted to sit here and just chat with you guys. You know, again, like I said earlier, it's Pride Month and I just wanted to you know, talk about my journey with my dad and my, with my family and how it hasn't always been easy for me and I know a lot of people will see my life and think that like oh his life is like perfect it's outlandish he's a beauty guru he has millions of followers it's so easy for him all the time but it's not and I just want you guys to know that I've struggled so much in the past I've struggled for so long and so hard I really had to dig within myself to really keep going and really keep pushing and I've been so lucky to have the platform that I have you know to talk about these kind of things and for you guys to be able to reach out to me or give you guys resources you know I'm gonna link some links down below of different organizations for you guys if you guys need some help. I just want to say thank you to my dad for coming on here and being so candid and being so honest and just, you know, confronting his
his past with how it was for the LGBT community with him and how it was for us, you know, growing up and things like that. It was hard, but we got through it and now we work together like literally every single day. We sure do. It's so cool and so crazy to see such a transformation and it's I'm so lucky to have the parents that I have who are so loving. If you guys have parents who are going through something similar, you know, show them this video if this helps you or maybe might help them too. We've gotten to a point that's so great and I know it's just going to continue to get better and better as the years go by. Yeah, that's it you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know this is definitely not the normal Manny MUA video, but I really, <laughs> really, really wanted to make it for especially being Pride Month and wanting to share my story with my dad and just show that it does get better and it does get easier for those who feel like they're in a rut and they're struggling and that it will get better for you guys. I love you guys so much. Have a great rest of the night or day wherever you guys are and we will catch you guys in our next video. Mwah. Take care. Bye you guys. Nice. Uh, Good job bye -bye. dad. Oh, I love you. Wow, I'm pale. <laughs> Fuck. Like dad, you're a Latino compared to me. I sure am. This is going to be a lot harder than I thought it was. Shit. <laughs> I haven't even got down to my fucking first, you even started yet, first Dad. Damn <laughs> paragraph. I swear, man. You're doing great, I'm Dad. I'm kick your ass. <laughs>